few months ago, I tried my hands at digital painting for the first time. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing and I barely managed to create something that could pass off as digital art. Fast forward to today and I'm actually about to paint my very first official digital illustration. There's just one tiny problem. I haven't touched a digital brush ever since, I have just one week to complete it and I have still absolutely no clue how to actually make a digital painting. When Clip Studio reached out to me and asked me if I could make a digital illustration, I was of course like, hell yeah, bring it on, let's go. I didn't hesitate for a second. Well, maybe I should have. Considering that I have never actually made a fully finished digital illustration before, yeah, maybe I should have. But shoulda, coulda, woulda, I'm not one to back down on my word. And certainly not one to back down from a challenge. So I decided to try the improbable and translate my painting skills into the digital world. The first thing I learned about making digital art is that it comes with its own stages. And each stage comes with its own challenges and ups and downs. The first one being the beginning stage, the most fun and satisfying of them all. I started my painting with a drawing and by simply coloring everything with simple flat colors. But I could have started it any number of ways. Whether you start with a line drawing, a black and white painting or simple shapes of color, the great thing about this stage of the digital process is that there is basically no way you can mess up. You can always change and adjust parts without having to completely start from scratch. I could comfortably paint and make changes to my color without affecting my line drawing, for example. Which is kind of mind-blowing if you think about it, at least if you're a traditional artist. But the fact that you can change your mind at any time and go back and try out things before you commit to anything does make you more comfortable while painting. And it lets you try out new things or change your mind mid-process and this ultimately takes out almost all the pressure from the entire painting process. The next stage that I encountered was the shaping stage. A slightly less fun, but extremely interesting part of the process. I mean, blue dots have to turn into eyes at some point, so you have to eventually start adding shadows and light to turn flat color shapes into three-dimensional forms. Maybe this part is straightforward for someone who is experienced in making digital art, but for me, this was an endless cycle of changing brushes, switching colors and making adjustments. And it took forever. Sometimes I would do something I didn't intend, while other times I couldn't get the simplest things to work. Do I use a soft brush now or a canvas brush or do I have to use two brushes and then blend the colors and so on and so forth. Luckily Clip Studio Paint is incredibly forgiving and it aids you along the way by making things super easy to access and super clear so you can switch around and try out stuff super quickly. Which I had to do a lot of course. Again, when it comes to digital art, I'm basically just a noob and I have no idea how to achieve specific effects. So I found myself shaping and molding and changing stuff for what felt like an eternity. But the more I did that, the more comfortable I became. And I actually started to get a feeling for what kind of tools and techniques seem to work for me best. Clip Studio Paint is a mighty powerful painting software, period. Seriously, there is hardly anything you can't do. From illustrations to animations and all while giving you all the freedom in the world to change and customize everything to your own liking. But what seemed to work best for me was to limit myself to only a few tools like canvas, gouache or oil brushes and really focus on understanding how they work. I painted most of this painting with only three brushes and because they work so well, I didn't really need any more. The canvas textured brush and the oil brush in particular allowed me to paint in a way that's actually very close to how I would paint in real life. The 
The next stage was, let's say, challenging. The refining stage. Do you know the feeling when you have a vision and you know exactly what you want, but you have absolutely no clue how to get there? Well, that's basically how I felt doing this stage. This is the part where you connect the dots, so to speak, and give areas a more finished and refined look. But for me, this was clearly the part where my vision exceeded my digital painting skills. And I constantly found myself frustrated because I knew exactly what I wanted, but I had absolutely no clue how I could get there. I know, this is just a matter of experience, but as someone who has painted thousands of paintings before and is mostly used to just using his tools and bringing his visions to life, this was quite a new and humbling experience for me. Sometimes digital art is looked down on or seen to be as very easy, but I don't think it's as simple as that. Here is the deal with digital art in my opinion. It's incredibly easy to make average looking digital art. Seriously, the software gives you so many shortcuts and does so much of the work for you, it's much easier than physical painting. But here's the catch. I think it's very, very hard to make excellent digital art and it takes a ton of experience and expertise. The biggest issue for me actually was the endless possibilities. Since you can do anything you want really when making digital art, it's actually kind of hard to decide on what to do. You can change and adjust basically everything. It's just a bit too much for me if I'm honest, but maybe that's just a personality thing. I also prefer it when a restaurant has a handful of food items rather than an endless list, but maybe that's just me. The more options I have, the more confused I become. Should I adjust the colors, change proportions or change the style or change everything? So many options and certainly too many for such a simple traditional artist like me. But once you find your favorite tools and what works best for you, in my case, just having a limited palette and focusing on the absolute basics, the entire process starts to become almost addictingly fun. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, I found myself at the stage that surprisingly was the easiest of them all, the unifying stage. In my case here, this meant to add a background, add the last details and bring everything together. This part was especially exciting because I actually got to try out Clip Studio's newest feature, which I can imagine might be a game changer for many of you out there, their new color mixing. Here's the thing, when you paint digitally, the colors don't actually really mix at least not the way they would in real life. When you mix blue and yellow, for example, the transitioning color is some kind of muddy gray. But Clip Studio now has a feature that actually makes the colors behave like paint would behave in the real world. When you mix yellow and blue, you actually get what you'd expect, some form of green. This combined with the fact that you have brushes that allow you to emulate real paint, like gouache or oil paint, probably makes this the closest you can get to making traditional art with digital tools. I was at least very excited to test this out, so I used this feature to paint all the flowers and leaves in my illustration and to basically finish my painting off. But I gotta say, the best thing about making art digitally for me is still the time-lapse recording function, which lets you recap your entire process. And I'm actually particularly happy about this feature in this case, because now I get to show you how clunky the whole process really was and that I didn't magically create this illustration in a few brush strokes. Of course, I have the advantage that I can draw and see pretty well and I know quite a bit about color and picture making of course, but if you don't have absolute control over your tools, you can't really use your skills to their full potential. I'm sure this looks very different if an experienced digital artist makes their art, but for me, digital painting still is a process that's just trial and error and figuring things out as I go. 
I can highly recommend everyone to try it out for themselves. Painting with Clip Studio has been a super enjoyable experience for me and I'm actually super curious to get back to it and see what else I can do with it. It's not only available for the iPad, by the way, you can get it for your PC, your Mac, your smartphone, even Chromebook. And Clip Studio Paint also has a free trial version, so if you're curious now, just give it a go. Let me know in the comments down below how you like the painting and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.